All right, good afternoon. Mayor Dick Starroper here at the Wayne's Bar Library, helping out Mrs. Karen Sour Beer on military appreciation. Um, when I graduated from high school way back in uh, 1955, there was five of us that kind of ran around together, and we didn't know what we were going to do. It so happens that one of our teachers, or principal, I'm not too sure which, was the company commander of a heavy tank outfit in Chambersburg. So the five of us enlisted in that reserve outfit and uh, spent some time uh, summer camp at uh, Indian Town Gap and at Fort Knox, Kentucky. Uh, after about two years, Landis Tool Company uh, started to uh, slow down and four of the five of us uh, worked there and uh, I was working at the bank at the time. So we decided, well, let's volunteer for the draft. So the five of us volunteered for the draft, went to Fort Dix, New Jersey for basic training, took regular uh, basic plus uh, a second eight. Um, and then in the meantime, four of the guys, uh, three of the guys got the orders to go to Germany. And uh, one of the other guys that was with me, they he went to Alabama, didn't know where at the time. I had to stick around for a little bit because I had taken an OCS test and uh, waiting for the results on that. Missed it by one point, and my first sergeant was very upset with who they picked, but couldn't do any more about that. So then I was, uh, my orders uh, went to Alabama also, and it was at uh, Fort Rucker, Alabama, Army Aviation School. Now, I had no experience in aviation, but I worked in finance since that was my background. And after about a month, I finally found where my buddy was at. He was there on the same grounds, and we got to see each other. Uh, Fort, uh, yeah, Fort Rucker was an a interesting place. From the 30th of May to Labor Day, if you didn't have duty, you got into somebody's car or somebody drove. We went to Panama City, Florida for a weekend. And it was uh, unreal that uh, Sunday mornings when you woke up, you could look up and down the white sandy beaches and saw army blankets because there was a lot of mil military uh, going there. Um, so we spent time there. And after our tour of duty was up, uh, we came home. Uh, and started uh, our lives alive again. Um, of course, after I got married and had a couple of daughters, the youngest daughter, um, or the oldest daughter, took the you know, military test in school and, and uh, she passed it, but she wasn't interested in it. My youngest daughter, I'm not too sure whether she took the test or not, she was just interested. And she enlisted in the Coast Guard, and her duty stations were all over the over the country. Uh, she started out, of course, uh, basic training in Connecticut, and her first duty station there was in Key West, Florida. You can't get anything any better than that. But then she was in Boston, and uh, Atlantic City, Long Beach, California, and. Uh, Seattle, Washington. While she was at Atlantic City is when 9-11 hit and she gave me a call. I was at work. She gave me a call and said, Dad, we're headed to, to New York search and rescue. Well, five minutes or so later, she called again and said, Dad, it's just rescue. So she had a uh, interesting uh, week or so doing that. Um, she, let's say, traveled uh, all over the world. She's been on both sides of Russia, Germany, England, and I consider her one of the best duties. Uh, when she was in Seattle, uh, she took a icebreaker three times down to Antarctica. And uh, I have some pictures at home of some of the big icebergs down there and uh, a few other odds and ends. But she, uh, she enjoyed that. It was a six-month tour of duty from the time they left 
uh, Seattle till they got back. Uh, they were supposed to go down a fourth, a fourth time, but it got waylaid uh, because uh, there was a Russian icebreaker that was going down to do their job, uh, but that didn't work out. The Russian icebreaker broke down, so those guys from Seattle had to go back down again and, and help people out. So she's had a lot of uh, interesting career, um, one in particular that also when she was going from Long Beach, California, no, came from Boston, and she's been through the Panama Canal twice, and she was headed up the west coast towards Seattle. Um, they spotted something on their radar in the water. Well, they checked with the uh, U.S. bases around and everything, and came up wasn't one of ours. So, at uh, a little bit later on, the company commander of the, of the boat said, lock and load. And she said, oh boy, here we go. But nothing happened. You couldn't find anything. So they were kept on their merry way to, to Seattle. So she said some interesting uh, uh, tour, uh, tours of duty, uh, driven with her three times back across the country. Um, in a lot of states. I think there's only about two or, two or three states that I have not been been through since uh, uh, helping her out to uh, go from Long Beach to Wayne's Bar and, and then from Boston to Seattle and Seattle back home. So but, uh, she's enjoyed it. She spent 27 years. She ended her career as an E9, which is the highest that she can go as enlisted personnel. She's had some officers tell her that you need to go to OCS school. And she says, no. And they said, why not? She says, I'm at the top of my rank now. I can do what I want to do. I don't want to start at the bottom and start over again. And they agreed with her. So, but she enjoyed her time there. I enjoyed my time. I spent 12 years uh, active and reserve duty uh, in the area and uh, ended up uh, my last duty station and reserves was in Greencastle. But I appreciate it very much, and uh, thank Karen for, for what she's doing here for this.